Hello and a very warm welcome to the channel. I've got another reaction video for you guys. So this is a request. It's from Gene Richardson. Um, and if there's one thing I've learned in my life, and, and there probably is only one thing, it's when Gene Richardson tells you to do something, you do it. Okay, so, so Gene, this is for you. Um, this is from the Brothers in Arms channel, and it's how the US military smoked Russian mercenaries. Now, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it's, this refers to. So there was a battle in Syria in either 2017, 2018, sometime around there, where um, a group of US soldiers was, were attacked by a Russian mercenary group called Wagner. I think something like a hundred Russians died. I mean, it hasn't been officially admitted. Something like a hundred Russians died, no American casualties. Uh, and it was just a, a, a dramatic American victory. But I'm, I'm really interested to learn more about this. I do know a bit about Wagner, so I can kind of fill in the details. Also, if you're more interested in my historical content and sort of political content, um, I do have a history specific channel, specific channel, um, called History Nut Reacts. So I'll put a link to that in the description and probably in the top comment as well. But anyway, let's let's watch the video. When the first vehicle in the convoy suddenly blew up, the Russian mercenaries knew something was wrong. <laughs> Their objective. That that's a pretty good hint, isn't it? Like your vehicle blows up. Not everything's going to plan. To capture an oil field in eastern Syria was supposed to be a routine mission. The enemy, they knew by then, would have fled long ago at the sight of 500 battle-hardened Russian and Syrian fighters. Fair enough. But instead, the attack had come to an abrupt halt. An explosion after explosion shook the ground. It wasn't long before AC-130 gunships, Predator... And the AC-130, that is a beast. Like, the amount of firepower that has, that thing has is insane. Um, like, I, I very much hope that I never go to war in my life. <laughs> but if I do, I want to be on the same side as the AC-130. Almost regardless of what country or, or ideology it's fighting for. Though I'm pretty sure only America uses them, but I might be wrong about that. Drones, Apache helicopters, and fighter jets were... That, that is an F-22 or an F-35, I, I get them confused. Circling over the battlefield, pounding the attackers from every imaginable angle. What the Russian forces didn't know was that the oil field was not defended by any fighters, ah. but by American Special Operations Forces, supported by the most powerful air force in the world. And nice. so, within a few minutes, the routine mission turned into hell on earth and into one of the deadliest engagements for the notorious Russian mercenary group Wagner. To stop the rapid advance of the self-proclaimed Islamic State, the U.S. had deployed troops in Syria since 2014. They supported the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF. A year later, Russia also intervened in the fight against ISIS, but on the side of Assad's Syrian government forces. The SDF and the Syrian army were never seen as allies, but in keeping with the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, both parties at least mostly avoided each other. Yeah, so I mean, the SDF were, at, and were indeed still are, um, dominated by Kurdish groups. So they were dominated by a group called the YPG, which is a, a Syrian Kurdish militia. Um, so I say that obviously Russia intervened to save Assad, which, which they pretty much succeeded in doing. I mean, Assad has just been, or Syria under Assad has just been allowed back into the Arab League. Um, the US intervened against ISIS. So sometimes the Americans and the Russians were on the same side. Sometimes they were kind of against each other. It, it was a really, really, um, and, and indeed remains, a really chaotic situation. After years of fighting, both armies managed to drive out the terrorists. And by 2018, ISIS held only a fraction of its original bases. To prevent an unintended conflict between Russian and US supported armies, a deconfliction line was formed along the Euphrates River which effectively bisects Syria. In addition, both parties were able to contact each other through special telephone channels that were kept clear at any time. But despite all these precautions, on February 7th, just a few miles from the Euphrates River, the first deadly clash between Russians and Americans since the Cold War occurred. Late in the evening of February 7th, 2018, 500 Russian and Syrian fighters attacked an SDF military base. The base was located about five miles east of the Euphrates River and controlled one of the country's main oil fields. Thus, like most oil fields, the area was officially on the Syrian Democratic side of the ceasefire line. But this did not stop the Syrian-Russian troops in any way. 
The attackers were supported by various Russian-made battle tanks, as well as mortars, artillery, and rocket launchers, with which they began sh So this, this is the regular Syrian army, so a, a sad Syrian army supported by um, Russian mercenaries. Killing the SDF base. And v Wagner, who are the group involved, are complete psychopaths. Um, they're very active in Ukraine at the moment, but their, their signature move, um, they, they've kind of adopted the sledgehammer as an unofficial symbol. And that, that started because they killed a Syrian deserter with a sledgehammer on video, just bashed his head in. Um, and they, they did the same to one of their own men who surrendered in Ukraine and then went back to them. And they, they filmed him being um, being killed with a sledgehammer. So the sledgehammer has become kind of their unofficial symbol. Um, they're, they're led by a guy called, oh, what's his name? Pugohin? 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 Something like that. Um, anyway, the, the, the guy was called Putin Chef as his nickname because he owned some big catering companies which um, used to cater a lot for the Kremlin and obviously eventually he set up this private military company called Wagner which is now active all over the world. Uh, it's, it's active in lots of different African, African countries in particular and some Middle Eastern ones. Um, but yeah, so they are psychopaths. <laughs> it's without warning. In addition, Russian Air Force aircraft were on standby to provide air support but initially remained on the ground. Okay. However, while everything was initially going according to plan for the attacking forces, the phone suddenly rang in the Russian headquarters near the Euphrates. A representative of the U.S. military was on the line and wanted to know whether Russian fighters were currently trying to take the military base at the Conoco oil fields. Here, not only the Syrian Democratic Forces were under heavy artillery fire, but also their allies, American Green Berets, Army Rangers, Marines, and various support units. That's like three different special forces, right? Green Berets, Marines, um, oh, what was the other one? There, there was a third one, wherever it was. Um, so it's, it's like you're not just fighting one elite unit, you're fighting three elite units. That, that's when you know you properly screwed up. After the Russians had explicitly denied the question whether the enemy were their troops, it was clear to the caller. Whoever was currently taking fire at his soldiers he would feel the full force of the American military in just a few moments. The response to the attack on their military base was prompt and tremendous. Even before the Russian convoy reached its starting position for the attack, the first and last vehicles were taken out in a classic ambush maneuver, trapping the forces in the middle. Yeah, so that, that's like a really standard way of hitting a convoy. If you hit the first vehicle and the last vehicle, you make it much harder for the ones in the middle to escape. The missiles came from an American Reaper drone, which had been targeting the convoy for some time. However, to the Russian Wagner mercenaries on the ground, the drone was invisible, and they had a hard time understanding where the fire suddenly came from. It didn't take long for more shells to hit, spreading chaos on the battlefield. American artillery and HIMARS rocket launchers engaged the convoy. So HIMARS again is a piece of equipment which is, I mean, so Wagner are currently very, very active in Ukraine. Uh, there's a battle for a town for Bakhmut, which Wagner has captured most of, not quite all of, although their, their leader is kind of falling out with all the Russian military people and, and they will fall out of a window at some point because that kind of tends to happen in Russia. Um, but yeah, so HIMARS is, is one of the weapon systems that the Americans, not, not just the Americans, other countries as well, but gave to Ukraine, but really helped them turn the tides in, um, in 2022. It's an absolutely formidable system. Inflicting numerous casualties. While the Russian forces were still trying to realize what was happening, four Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. Although the gunships were several miles away, no one could hide from their precise infrared optics. Yeah. The laser-guided Hellfire missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks, while the 30mm cannon forced the enemy infantry to withdraw. Few of them were able to escape the explosive shells, and a Russian survivor later reported that they suffered about 200 casualties within the first few minutes, almost half of the entire attack force. And if, I'm, if my recollection's right, there were no American casualties at all. So that's 200 casualties on one side and literally zero on the other. It just shows you the incredible power of, um, of, well, of American air power and, and I suppose the skill of American special forces. The reports that are on TV about, well, you know, about Syria and the 25 people that are wounded there from the Syrian army. And, well, to make it short, we've had our <laughs> So one squadron, <laughs> 200 people. <laughs> 
right away. So it, it, it kind of, first of all, what, what he's saying is kind of amusing. But second of all, it's really amusing how their, their noise for a swear word is just a fart. <laughs> like, it makes me feel that the guy made the video has bowel problems. Another one lost 10 people. And I don't know about the third squadron, but it got torn up pretty badly too. So three squadrons took a beating. The Yankees attacked. First, they blasted the out of us by artillery. And then they took four helicopters up and pushed us in a merry-go-round with heavy caliber machine guns. They were all shelling the holy out of it. And our guys didn't have any. And if you say, in case you're feeling sorry for the Russians, just remember Wagner. Um, are the people famous for executing people with sledgehammers as like their signature move. Um, and, and they're really notorious for war crimes. So that there was a thing recently that in Mali, um, they, they, I mean, it wasn't just Wagner, but Wagner with, with government troops killed about 500 villagers. That's kind of their modus, their modus operandi. Um, so in, in case you're feeling sorry for, for Wagner and the Russians, don't, <laughs> basically. Anything besides the assault rifles. Nothing at all, not even mentioning shoulder-fired Sams or anything like that. So they tore us to pieces for sure, put us through hell. And the Yankees knew for sure that the Russians were coming, that it was us, Russians. Our guys were coming to commandeer an oil refinery, and the Yankees were holding it. We got our beat rough. My men called me, and they're there drinking now. Many have gone missing. It's a total It sucks. Another takedown. And like, honestly, this would be the biggest conflict or, or, or armed contact between, direct cut armed contract between Russians and Americans since I'm not even sure when. I mean, there were definitely, there were quite a few Russian pilots involved in the Korean War um, on a kind of semi-unofficial basis. I mean, I think there might have been the same in Vietnam. I'm not totally sure about that. But I, I, I can't think of a direct clash between two serious armed American and Russian military groups for, for a very long time. While AC-130 gunships circled over the battlefield engaging individual targets, large B-52 strategic bombers completely destroyed the convoy. And those things, like I, I said the AC-130 is, is scary, and it is, but the, the B-52, oh my god, it, it's like a flying aircraft carrier. <laughs> it's, it's like it's sort of a city moving through the sky. I, I've, I've seen them in museums and they are absolutely ginormous. Those who managed to escape hid in buildings, but even there, they were not safe for long. Late into the night, the attackers were hunted by F-15 fighter jets, whose bombs penetrated even the best cover. The new fifth generation air superiority fighter F-22 Raptor was also used. Uh, but so the soldiers on, it is an F-22. on the ground, it no longer made any difference who was pounding them. The Russian contractors did not stand a chance against the American Air Force. Although there were rumors that some pilots from the nearby Russian air base were asking for permission to take off, the blue-painted Su-34s and 35s remained on the ground. The attackers' casualties were so heavy that in the middle of the battle, one of the Russian commanders called in and asked for a ceasefire, indicating that Russian military was in contact with the attacking fighters after all. A published call from a Wagner mercenary sums up events in Syria. Just had a call with a guy. So they basically formed a convoy, but didn't get to their positions by some 300 meters. One unit moved forward. The convoy remained in place about 300 meters from the others. The others raised the American flag, Ooh. and their artillery started f***ing ours really hard. I mean, as soon as the Russians saw the American flag, they should have withdrawn. Um, because A, they weren't supposed to be getting into a fight with the American military. And B, they weren't capable of getting into a fight with the American military. If they just thought they were taking on a small group of SDF, um, so Syrian, probably Kurdish fighters, fair enough. But as soon as you saw the American flag, this is a bad move. Then their choppers flew in and started f***ing everybody. Ours just running around. Just got a call from a pal. So they're about 215 f***ing killed. Jeez. They simply rolled ours out f***ing hard. Made their point. What the guards were hoping for in there? That they f***ing run away themselves? Hooked up. Sorry, if the farting is still <laughs> really amusing. Me. So I, I, I might let out a couple myself during this section, um, and hopefully no one will notice. I, I, I'm pretty sure I can get away with it. Scare them away? Lots of people f***ing so bad they can't be f***ing I need you that one. Indeed. There were no foot soldiers on the American side. They simply f***ed our convoy with artillery. 
When the battle ended early next morning, there was nothing left of the convoy of vehicles. All combat vehicles have been destroyed, with the exception of a single battle tank and armored personnel carrier. Of approximately 500 Russian and Syrian attackers, at least 200 were killed or wounded. One of the mercenaries later reported that in some places they found solidified melted sand and gun barrels bent from the heat. There were no casualties on the American side and no reports of damaged aircraft. So what was particularly interesting about this incident is the Russians didn't make a big deal about it at the time. Um, I think because they were kind of embarrassed as to just how one-sided the battle was. But kind of, the, I mean, it, 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 partly, I guess, because it was mercenary troops rather than regular Russian military troops. But, I mean, really, Wagner is, whilst it's officially a mercenary group, it's, it's unofficially kind of an arm of the Russian state. I mean, it cooperates very closely with the Kremlin. It basically does what the Kremlin wants it to do. So they're mercenaries, but they're not that far away from being regular Russian soldiers. Um, so yeah, it's a really interesting, but the Russians didn't make a big fuss about it at the time, which I say, I think, I think A, they were embarrassed uh, about just how badly they did, and they kind of realised they screwed up by attacking the position, and I guess perhaps at that time they didn't want to fight, but I, I don't know, interesting. Only one of the SDF soldiers in the base at the oil field was wounded by Russian fire, but survived. The incident sparked outrage on both Russian and Syrian sides, but since the Americans had repeatedly reassured themselves through the Russian officials, they could not be blamed. Yeah. According to intercepted phone calls between the leader of Wagner and Russian ministers, the attack was even said to be an order from Moscow. For Wagner Group fighters, the Battle of Conoco Fields went down in history as Red February and was one of their most humiliating engagements. At least some of them received a medal specially made for this event. It shows a Russian soldier surrounded by flames heroically shooting at an American Apache helicopter. A scene that probably never took place in this way. Also, that's like a really bigging up the Americans. It's like our guys have got AK-47s and they're on fire on the ground whilst you've got a fleet of attack helicopters. I'm not sure about that one, Wagner. The Syrian Democratic Forces and their American allies had successfully defended the base at the oil field and continued to fortify it. The demonstration of their superior air power was meant to be a warning to any hostile forces not to mess with the wrong people. Interestingly, when Syrian and Russian fighters gathered in the area again about a month later, the Americans once more contacted the Russian commander in charge. This time, it was not long after the end of the phone call that the entire Russian-Syrian fighting force hastily withdrew. Uh, yeah, that, that I understand. That's um, a respectable decision. For those who made it this far, thanks for watching. If you want to help us produce more content, feel free to leave a like and tell us what you think of the attack. So that, that was very interesting. I, I knew about the incident in general terms. I didn't know the details. Um, I didn't realise the extent to which it was just US air power pounding the Russians to pieces, although that does kind of make sense. Uh, as I say, Wagner, not a very nice group. Um, so at the moment, they're very active in Ukraine and their, their current big thing, although, although they've actually been stopped, by, stopped to some extent, but they spent a long time recruiting directly from prisons. So Russian prisoners would get their sentences commuted if they did six months service with Wagner. Um, so f for the first few months of this year, hundreds of Wagner um, mercenaries, ex-prisoners were being slaughtered every month in sort of almost suicidal attacks on Ukrainian positions. Um, and of course, Prigozhin, which I think is how you pronounce it, but I'm probably butchering it, does not care at all. Um, but as, as I say, he, he's falling out really badly with the Russian high command. So there's probably going to be some kind of nasty incident for someone along the way. Anyway, but though that, that was really interesting. Um, it, it shows just how incredibly dominant the American military is. I mean, as I say, other than China, I mean, there's no military in the world that can hold a candle to it. And only China could even sort of give it a run for its money. Um, but yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please do like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you.